Y aquel que de tus labios la miel quiera, que pague con brillantes tu pecado. Ya que la infamia de tu cruel destino marchito tu adorable primavera es menos escabroso tu camino y vende caro tu amor Aventurera, ya que la infamia de tu cruel destino marchito tu adorable primavera, haz menos escabroso tu camino. Vende caro tu amor, aventurera. Okay, thank you, guys. So the first song is called La Lámpara, and I think it's a, a Dominion Public, so because I don't know the the song singer songwriter that wrote it back in the day the second song is called aventurera from the famous and one and only agustin, agustin lara. lara yeah it's a uh, adventurous woman that's the name of the song <laughs> so we have one more song for you guys and then we're going to enjoy the action and all the artwork and all the uh, q a and all the artists from portola district and thank you again uh, stay tuned and um, um, uh, uh, sign up at the Arts Pan so we know about all the shows and all these grateful uh, organ uh, organized events soon and eventually, hopefully, soon enough in person. Next. We're going to do Celoso. Uy. The Jealousy One. Actually, that's not a Mexican <laughs> song, but I, I it's been <laughs> recorded in Spanish, and I found out it's a... Uh, very American song is called The Jealousy One. <laughs> Sin tu 
amor, los celos me consumen y el temor no me deja dormir. Dime tú, ¿qué hago vida mía? Thank you. That was beautiful. Oh, That's nice. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm just letting a few more latecomers into the room, but we so appreciate you joining us in celebration of this awesome online exhibition um, curated by Philip Hua, one of our great arts fan supporters, artists, and a talented curator and wonderful community member. Um, we really love having Philip in our corner. We're so lucky to have him. And, but before I hand the reins fully over to Philip, I do want to give a brief intro to those of you who might be new to Arts Band or new to our Art in Neighborhoods program, which is how we're able to do these exhibitions. Um, Art Neighborhoods started about, I guess, three years ago now in 2018. Um, and it is a program that brings exhibitions throughout the city of San Francisco to unexpected venues and locations. Um, Pre-COVID, these locations have included bowling alleys, cafes, um, hotels, restaurants. Um, unfortunately, because of our current situation and reality, we have pivoted that program to online. So uh, thank you for continuing to support us and support our artists by engaging with us through this new platform, through Zoom, through our website, through our online gallery. It really means a lot to not only to Artspan, but really to the creators who engage with us and that we work so hard to promote and uh, raise awareness for. So thank you all for coming and we hope that you enjoyed tonight's presentation. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Philip so he can present all of our amazing artists from tonight's exhibition and that he can give you some more tidbits and more information as to why you should continue to love artists and support them. So take it away, Philip. Thanks, Vanessa. Welcome everyone to this uh, exhibition tonight. We have a feature of um, Portola and Portola adjacent artists uh, for this exhibition called A New Beginning. And when I originally conceived of this group show, I was thinking about um, it. This was uh, close to the end of 20, 2020 before the election had started and I was thinking about a change one way or another, whether we had the current president or not. And I wanted to really think about how could we respond to whatever happened uh, to it, it politically and see how the artists would or could adapt to uh, a new year, a new uh, administration or just change that's happening in um, our neighborhood and our city. So I reached out to a bunch of artists as well as Dueto Arte, uh, musicians who are in the Portola and I uh, asked them to be part of this exhibition. So I'm really excited to present to you the artist here tonight. We have Barry Barber Duncan, we have Charles Dabo, Jennifer Doherty, Enrico Gallegos, Jenny Giatis, Paul Kensinger, Arthur Koch, Lisa Magruder, and Meg Oldman, who unfortunately could not be here with us tonight. So to start off, I would like to uh, introduce you all to their work by sharing um, their work with you so you can see their work. And I'll ask them to tell us a little bit about themselves and their work. 
um, and maybe their connection to or experience of the portola. And um, at the end, we will have uh, a, some Q&A. So if you have any questions for our artists, um, this is your moment. Uh, cue them up, type them in the chat, and we will save them up. Uh, it's, it's your opportunity to get inside the mind of the artists and their work and their inspirations. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our slideshow. And here we have the exhibition. And we're gonna start off with Barry Barber Duncan. So Barry, if you would mind, please tell us a little bit about um, your connection to the, the Portola or your experience of it. Tell us a little bit about the works um, that we're looking at. And then also if you could tell us a little bit about how you chose these works to respond to the theme, A New Beginning. So. I'll let you go ahead and tell us about this work right here. Okay, uh, so I live on Berlin in the Portola. I like to call it Berlin. Uh, that was original name, it's now Brussels. <laughs> After World War II or at World Wars, the name got changed. And uh, yeah, um, so this work, the, the original photo was taken a couple years ago, pre-COVID we were doing a trip through Colorado. And uh, this one, I got new software, so I was really able to bring it up recently, just redid it. But this kind of symbolizes the change, new beginnings. So I see this mm -hmm. from like scorched earth, but yet there's beauty coming from it. And, and like, where was this photo taken? I'm sorry. Uh, Colorado. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like the COVID days we're in right now and the Trump era. I'm kind of hoping we have like a roaring 20s. Mm -hmm. It's come up ahead for us. Okay. Yeah. And, and this, one, this one, also taking the same trip. This was taken in Colorado at a... Uh, uh, the Lakeview Amusement Park. It's an old amusement park, kind of threadbare, but full of personality. And I thought it was like change. Sometimes change just throws you up, twists you around. You don't really, doesn't really come willingly all the time, but yet it's very fun. Like the tilt, tilt world, tilt world. It's a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I know you got started in um, uh, traditional film photography, and I'm wondering if there's anything about that medium versus the digital medium that you miss, or is there anything that you um, uh, appreciate about the new medium? Um, tell us about uh, your feelings between the two um, uh, film versus digital photography. Well, one of my favorite parts of the film was in the dark room. Mm -hmm. That's where the magic happened. And now with digital, I'm on my laptop. Mm -hmm. It's like totally zen for me. I can just go, I, I work a very stressful, emotionally draining job. Mm -hmm. And after work, I can just play around with photos. My mind goes free and everything's beautiful. And I'm, I actually love digital more than I do film. Yeah, I mean, it just, uh, I, I know taking a film class myself, you know, one of the things about um, in the, the dark room is that, you know, that's your one shot, right? You're, you're developing this one um, photo and, you know, there's also the cost uh, aspect that you have to pay attention to. But with digital, you kind of are free to just take as many photos as you want without worrying too much about that. Do you think that helps the artistic um, I or or hurts it to to have that ability to take as many photos as you want. Well, that reminds me of my first photography teacher in high school. He told me the secret to getting a good photograph was taking as many as you can. And his I, you know, there's 36 shot rolls back then. He's like, if you get one good photograph out of all the 36, you are actually doing very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you, 
uh, Barry. Okay. We're gonna move, we're gonna move on to uh, Charles. Charles Dabo. Hello. Hi, welcome, Charles. All right. Um, Thank you. I wanted to um, uh, have you tell us a little bit about these two pieces that we're looking at right here, if you could. Sure. Uh, the lunar, lunar cityscape is pretty much something I felt by the end of 2020. As we all know, uh, it has been a very challenging year and my perception of <clears throat> everything that was happening, uh, a mixture of feelings and uh, having uh, to endure uh, news and new cast and breaking news and uh, accounts of whatever was happening around us. So I try to uh, think of something nice, something beautiful and I look at our city, San Francisco, and from my house, from my window, I can see San Francisco, the cityscape itself. And I started thinking of all these big cities because really what makes a city in the US are the high rise buildings, the tall buildings. And I also was pretty much reminiscing about the time I spent in New York City and working at night and looking at all these tall buildings and uh, making a comparison analogy between the two cities. And, and I, I said to myself, you know, there is something that is hope at the end of the day. And, and I said, this night, and it was just a, a, a night with a full moon uh, in the city. And I experienced the two things in New York City and here in San Francisco, being downtown, looking at all these tall buildings and, and full moon and thinking, you know, uh, at the end of the day, there is hope. So I started just looking at what makes a cityscape uh, under the moon light and all these frames, all these shapes like a staircase as you go, as you look in the distance and, and the colors, the colors change at night, you know, what is bright in the daytime and, and at night is mute. And I came up with this and I said, okay, we live in the city, we have hope in the future and the moon is kind of blessing to uh, our days. And I said to myself, okay, that's something I need to do work upon and create something. And that's how the lunar cityscape came to be. So it's hope. Mm -hmm. It was the end of a, a very enduring, a very challenging time, a very trying time. Uh, and the present of life is pretty much when you come out of a tunnel and the daylight, the sun. And uh, what you see there is, is a big, big sun sunset. And for me, that's San Francisco, California, uh, sea, seaside, dunes, and all, I have traveled a lot, you know, road driving along the coast of California. And so I put all these elements together that I actually like to see and I was witnessing and looking at and the idea of life itself and the sun the light, any light, uh, moonlight, sunlight, and in this case, the sunset is also uh, a symbol of hope. And, and I started composing and came up with this idea. And it's, it's the sunset, but you see the broken fence. It's uh, the symbol there is light and hope within light breaks barriers so anything that was dark we, we have lived and witnessed will be torn down by light so the sun itself the sunlight is a gift it's a present of life so that's uh, pretty much why the, the source the source of what how i created uh these two pictures thank you 
So and I know, yes. And I know you're you're a, a Portola resident. You're my neighbor. You're just around the corner over there. How long have you been here? Tell us how long. You know, close to thirty years now. I live on wow. Gottingen Street, and uh, I think what I loved about this this neighborhood when I first visited the neighborhood, I fell in love with it. With it, and I said to myself, "This is it. This is the place for me. This is where I want to be." And ever since, and I'm talking about back in the, in the late '90s when I first came to the Port Life District, and uh, as the year went by, uh, the surrounding, the community itself, the people, and it, the history of this neighborhood, and living here and doing gardening, haha, all that gave me a sense of place. A sense of place is something you call home and the port lot is home to me you know and by yeah. extension the city of san francisco yes yeah it's been great getting to know you over the years um I'd, I'd love to talk about these two pieces which when i look at them i i can see that there is a similarity in terms of the approach but at the same time they they also feel um, one feels a lot more solid flat color, whereas the other one has a little bit more um, rendering. And I, I want to know um, which one is more recent and which one do you feel is um, uh, actually tell me which one's more recent. And then um, the, the one on the right, the uh, lunar cityscapes, it feels um, like the colors are a little bit more um, uh, subjective and you're sort of making your own decisions. What made you choose to, to approach the colors that way with the painting on the right than the one on the left? Yeah, so the cityscape had these, they were cool colors, but they really bright and, and really present, even vivid colors, because for me that represents hope. There's life after all, after all we, we, we've been through there's light, and I wanted to, to, to express that by the brightness of these cool colors. Because, you know, when I was in art school, we would say, oh, all these colors, you know, blue family are cold colors. But the truth is, it's not just a thing. I just wanted to, to, to show that, that yes, they're in that family of cool colors, but they're warm, and the warmth of hope. That's why I chose these colors the way they are right now. Yeah. And that was the one I, I did at the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, the present of life, the, the light is diffused because when, when you go by the seaside and you're watching a sunset, light itself kind of spreads. It's not something that hits you. Because everything blends in. and how it works with, with your eyes and as it goes to your brain. I don't know, it's probably just a personal kind of vision thing I have there when I look at something and how it comes out in, in, in color, you know, on, on, the, on the canvas and choice of color, how I decided to make them like mute, you know, as opposed to what's on the right there in the cityscape, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to move on to our next artist, Jen Doherty. Is that right, Doherty versus Daughtry? Just want to make sure. It's actually Doherty, but oh, it's okay. the only place that says it is in Ireland like that. My husband's from Ireland, so. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> but Doherty is perfect. No, per Doherty's perfect. <laughs> That's the perfectly accepted American version. Thank Great. you. Well, Jen, uh, Jennifer, uh, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about these two photos? Um, uh, maybe a little bit about your connection to or experience of the portal? Mm -hmm. um, well, the photos were taken in the Castro on the Saturday after the election when things were kind of finalized and everyone went kind of ballistic there and I was like I have to go down um and it wasn't for the photos I went for the experience I took my daughters um well some of my daughters <laughs> and um 
and we just I just wanted them to experience um I don't know it just felt like kind of as the picture on the left hope <laughs> um and yeah it was like the mark of a new beginning for us I thought and having five daughters I wasn't exceptionally pleased with the administration that was in and so um yeah I just started capturing some of the images that I saw in the signs and I don't know it was an extremely moving day I think I was <laughs> I'm emotional as it is but I think I was uh pouring tears all afternoon we were only there for <laughs> for an hour but it was long enough and and um, yeah, it was, this was just some of the experience that we had there. And um, I think my daughters really understood and enjoyed my feel of relief and everybody around just congratulating everybody. And it was, it was like a feeling like, I don't know, no other. <laughs> and so um, I felt like these two images definitely conveyed how I felt at the moment. And I think, in general, that's how majority of my photos are just based on a feeling and spur of the moment. And there's no rhyme or reason. I don't think I ever just set out to go take pictures. It just is like, <laughs> if I see something that I'm just drawn and that's how that day was too. Um, but yeah, and as far as the uh, Portola, I, I actually live adjacent <laughs> in the Excelsior, um, just kind of near the top of the hill, but my oldest daughter will be attending um, Burton High School um, come August. So I'm super excited about that to keep it local in the hood. I, I definitely love this area. And I've lived here seven years and yeah, it's my favorite area of the city that I've ever lived. Yeah. I, I was looking at your photos and, you know, you can't help but notice it's like a big crowd of people and, you know, during these times with COVID, um, were you at all uh, concerned about your safety of going into the, the, the crowd and, and it, if you weren't, what, or if you were, I guess, uh, what changed your mind? What made you decide, I, I got to go out there? Um, that's a good question especially because we were insanely careful and have been this whole time. <laughs> like mm -hmm. literally at that point had been hardly anywhere. And um, yeah, really hardly anywhere. And we, you know, are really all about masks and social distancing. And the crazy thing is, is that it, even though it looks so crowded, it was actually, people were really respectful of space. I have to say, if you didn't get in the crowd, which we kind of skirted around, and even this second picture looks, I mean, the beauty of cameras and zooms and stuff, it looks like you're right next to those people, but we kept in our little bubble away from everybody. So I felt like, honestly, we, we stayed really safe. I had my three oldest daughters with me and, um, and they were, you know, kind of like, are you sure we're going to go out? Like, it felt that epic to me that I thought this is history and we have to experience this history that's happening right now. And we went to one other <laughs> protest earlier in the year and it was the same kind of situation. I feel like in our city, people are really, you know, mindful and respectful of the space and everyone is wearing masks. Like I didn't even see anybody there without a mask on at all. And so I thought it was okay. And I thought, I don't know. I, I just said, let's hop in the car and go. <laughs> like it was like, it was just too historic to me that I, I thought it just had to happen. Um, so yeah. And so as a, as a photographer, you mentioned that um, you didn't go out in mind thinking that you were gonna take these photos. Um, are there ever times where you're like, I am gonna go, I have this idea and I'm gonna search for photos like this or is it more of an organic process where you kind of, like you said, just kind of have your phone on you and 
um, are taking pictures. Walk us through your your process of, of making a body of work. It is um, almost 100% organic kind of. Um, I think in my artist statement, if anyone clicks on that, it pretty much sums it up. It's a matter of, I don't know, I feel like a, where I'm just drawn to something. It could be like the most random thing. And and no, I there's never been like, I'm gonna go shoot this. I have a small Sony camera and and my phone and I use both and it's like, I just whip out whatever. And um, yeah, it's, it's always like, there's, there's some shots, like one that was in the, the last Iris Band show that was like of a streetcar right in front of me and it just spoke to me as soon as, and I don't know, it just, yeah, there's never, I don't think I've ever just gone out. Like, I'm gonna take a picture of this today. Maybe, maybe more landscape stuff, but not this kind of stuff. Not street kind of photography, you know. And I think that's just street photography in general. Like you never know what you're gonna get and you just have to wait till something calls at you. And I'm always drawn to text. I don't know, um, signs and um, almost every photo I take on the street has some sort of text in it. And I, I don't know, hmm. wait till it's- um, Is there something about text that, um... Uh, tell us about why that that appeals so much to you. I don't know. I think it's like signs and messages all around. And I think that there's a reason why you were looking at, uh, I'm all about right at the moment, like, you know, seeing repetitions of numbers and the synchronicities that are all around us. It's sometimes just speaking to you and like why did you look there at that moment like I don't know I feel like sometimes then if you capture it then maybe someone can feel that feeling that you felt at that moment yeah it almost kind of gives its own caption doesn't it <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> sometimes it like these are very literal but sometimes it's not so that way great thank you thank you we're gonna move on to our next artist um, Enrico Gallegos. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you very much for having me here. And I got to thank Mr. Philip Pua for putting me, I was late, so, but you included me and I appreciate that very much. And my counselor who motivated me to do, to participate in this program. Um, first of all, I got to let you know that I'm very nervous <laughs> because I'm not good with crowds and um, and I'm just nervous. This is new to me, but I'm gonna do the best I can to explain. Pretend it. it's just you and me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I've been living in the Portola for two years, uh, first of all. Uh, I love it here. So um, I'm in a program and we have, uh, I'm, I'm here in one of their houses. Um, the first painting, uh, well, first of all, before going to the paintings, I got to tell you that I started painting because of my psychological self. Um, I'm, I'm schizoaffected. And so I've gone through a lot of challenges throughout my life because of that state. And so there, I found out that one of the ways that I can uh, process the way I feel and my emotions. Because sometimes you can get very numbed, you know, with so much emotion inside. And it's very hard to, for me to pinpoint which emotion is which or what is it that I'm really feeling. And so I started painting as a way of expressing and processing my emotions. Um, it started with a book that I read about a, a technique in psychology called psychosynthesis. It's, it's a psychological system and they talk about using free drawing and other techniques in order to express your emotions and heal yourself psychologically. And so I started doing psychosynthesis, which is free drawing and uh, in painting. And that's how I began uh, paint, doing this these paintings. Uh, um, the first one in the Garden of Eden, they see me. Uh, it's basically about a being in a state of paranoia. 
you know, where you feel that everything, everyone is staring at you and everyone is looking at you, even though they might not be, but in your mind, that's what's happening. And it's, it has to do with beginnings because um, I started painting uh, at the end of 2019 and all throughout 2020. And I had gone into, in 2018, I had gone through a very uh, traumatic experience in my life. I basically lost everything. And so I was about to, I was in a transition period where I was about to begin a new, I was trying to begin a new part in my life after gone through all that loss and, and trauma. And so uh, this is what that picture is part of, you know, and all these paintings. And so um, in the Garden of Eden, they see me, it's about that. You know, you can see uh, the theme of, of the Garden of Eden, which is a beginning of humankind in, in biblical myth. And uh, in the Garden of Eden, God was watching on Eve all the time, according to the story. And, and, and Adam and, and looking at what they, they were all doing in the Garden of Eden. So that's the way I, this seems to me like how I felt the times where I was in a very sad psychological state where I felt that everybody was judging me or the world was looking at me or, you know, or I was very self-conscious about my, my emotional state. Um, the silhouette of a warrior of love that happened. Uh, I, the way the picture, the painting took place or came about, I didn't sit down and said, I'm gonna draw as a warrior. Basically it started just with free drawing. It took, I, I started drawing the different symbols and you know, the different squares and everything. And then at the end of the picture, I look at it and then I realize it looks like a silhouette of a human being. And then the heart, you know, and everything, it was like, that's what my beginning is. It's about um, not being a warrior of hate and all those bad things, but actually taking love and becoming a warrior, a, a warrior of love and setting up foundations, not out of uh, resentment, bitterness and fear but setting up new foundations for a new life and a new beginning by being love itself and choosing love instead of the negative. And so that's what that picture, um, that painting is about. Um, that's basically it. Thank you. Yeah, these are really exciting um, images, the way there is just this a lot of information and colors that sort of, um, are put next to each other and you're kind of taking in all of this uh, visual stimulus. Have you found that, um, you, you mentioned that you were using it in a form of art therapy. Have, yes. have you, has it been helpful for, for you? And have you, um, do you plan to do it a lot more? Tell us about your experience with um, using art as therapy. I love it because it gives me, I, I, I didn't realize how much I love doing it and painting. It's like when I'm painting, it's like I'm in a meditation state. I'm so focused on, on, the, on what I'm drawing and so focused on the colors and that I forget about my issues. It's like I'm meditating. And yes, I definitely want to do this for the rest of my life because it's part of my healing process and it gives meaning to my life you know it gives me a, a purpose so yeah. definitely i love art and i think that um it is one of the healthiest ways you can use to uh process so many things trauma disease uh pain all that all that stuff yeah yeah amen to that well thank you for sharing your work with us, Enrico. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna to go to our next artist, Jenny mm -hmm. Giatis. Hi. 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 How are you, neighbor? I <laughs> I'm so inspired listening to all the artists and hear what they have to say. It's so great. Yeah, yeah. Well, we would love to be inspired by hearing about you and tell 
your um, piece, your beautiful piece here, What Do We Do Now? You want to tell us a little bit about it and then also your experience of or um, relationship to the Cordula. Um, well, maybe I'm gonna go backwards on that. Um, sure. I live on, also live on Berlin slash Brussels and uh, <laughs> we've lived in the neighborhood for about four years. And uh, you know, this neighborhood is really unique right it's it's um for anybody who doesn't live in the neighborhood who might be on this uh call this neighborhood is full of these people who do this crazy guerrilla gardening stuff um and it, it, it's very interesting so there's a there's a place down beyond san bruno avenue behind the businesses um that is being turned into this gorilla park. And they actually brought in a car to crash into the hill. And I was like, wow, this is just a wild idea. Um, so it actually inspired me to paint during a pretty dark time, you know? Um, so the great thing about like, if this was my practice painting, I never showed a painting in public before. So thank you everybody for being so generous. Um, it, the great thing is I look at it and it kind of like tells me about myself. And if I look at this painting, there's like a big division in it and a seriously impaired vehicle and people standing around just confused. And, you know, on one hand, it's very, uh, you know, chaotic and amateurish and, you know, like what's going on and like myself. And on the other hand, there's just so much freedom and beauty and um, just courageousness going on in this neighborhood. And you gotta love it. Like, it's just, it's a really wonderful thing. So. Yeah, that's my painting. <laughs> I, I am loving the vigorous brush strokes that are that is happening in your painting. And I, you know, for for other people who um, didn't know that this is your first painting, you might not one might not even know that, you know, or your first uh, exhibition, I should say. So I'm, I'm happy that Artspan was able to to exhibit this and, and give um, artists, all artists of different levels their first show. So um, uh, kudos to you on this beautiful painting. Um, I wanted to ask you more about the figures that are in, in this, uh, in the photo. And it, you can sort of see them, you can, you know, they're, they're sort of vaguely there, maybe not was that intentional? Did you want them to be not recognizable? Tell us why you made those decisions on um, what to show and and uh, why they're um, sort of sort of there, sort of not um, abstracted, I should say. Um, well, that's kind of my my dealio is I aspire to do abstract figures. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm not. I haven't done a lot of drawing in my life. I. Um, so I, I don't think I have a chance of making them realistic. So, but I like abstract figures. So that's why they're there. It, the, yeah. I'm, I feel like they are more successful than the car, but the car is a really important part of the meaning of this painting. Um, I'm, I, I hope that the person who donated this amazing car to the park isn't offended by my lousy rendering of a car. Um, somebody told me that that car is worth a whole bunch of money. Have you seen it? Has any, have you, you guys should all go down and look at this park. I have seen it and it's uh, fantastic for everyone who doesn't know about it. Um, it is behind the Bank of the West uh, parking lot. It's uh, you can access it through uh, the borough's uh, pocket park, and uh, there's lots of really great things happening uh, there. And like you said, uh, a lot of great things happening uh, with neighbors doing uh, guerrilla gardening, which is one of the things that I love about our neighborhood as well. It's great, and it's a California <laughs> Natives Park too, which it's yeah. it's very cool. 
Uh, great. Thank you, Jenny. Um, we are going to move on to our next artist, Paul Kensinger. Hello, everybody. Oh. Happy to Hi. be in this show. It's uh, and thank you, Philip, for uh, putting this all together. It's been it's wonderful artwork that everybody has done for this show. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I've lived here in the uh, so far probably the longest period of time for anybody. I've lived in the Portola district now for uh, over thirty one years and moved here uh, because I like to garden. And this was uh, the area that had the best weather for gardening in, in San Francisco. And so uh, I have a very uh, full garden uh, of fruit trees and vegetables. But uh, I've been an artist my entire life. And, uh, you know, I paint intuitively uh, for the most part. I uh, work in series. Uh, and uh, this particular series has been a profile series that I've, I've been working on uh, for a number of years. And this, this particular painting, uh, it's a large canvas, and uh, it uh, started because of, uh, a gift, as a gift from a, a Liz Brager, an, an artist over in Bernal Heights, gave me three canvases this size as a gift. And, uh, and I had been, I'm traditionally an oil painter, uh, uh, but I work with murals. When I've done muraling, I've worked in acrylics. Uh, and on these, this particular piece, I began to work in acrylics. And that came out of, uh, in my studio, the ventilation for the oils and the fires was a bad combination because the airflow wasn't adequate enough during the fires. And so I couldn't get enough airflow to really paint in the oil. So I pulled the acrylics out and uh, I'd been wanting to move in this direction a little bit anyway. And so uh, I like working in glazes and uh, this particular painting just started out with glazes upon glazes and glazes. It's uh, uh, having a lot of fun just splashing color on on the on the canvas and then uh, as I work I disappear so I understand uh, Enrico's uh, statement about uh, a meditative state uh, and uh, you know I, I do disappear the outer self disappears and 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 really moves inward and so as I've been working through these profiles that came from a dream that I had, uh, I was looking at this abstract surface of colors and went for putting the profile in there. And so quickly uh, brought in the profile and uh, it sat for a while uh, as I looked at it, but it was disappearing. So I put the purple color back behind it. And uh, it really felt like it completed the state of mind that I was in during that period of time where I just felt as though uh, this is the world that we need to, to uh, really um, find ourselves and, and, and center ourselves in, the, in our truths and in our, and in our uh, inner realities and bring out uh, uh, ourselves. And so this is, this is a, 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 the canvas that came from that. Mm -hmm. and, and having seen more of your work before um, and seeing more of these profiles, um, I'm wondering if, um, I'd love to know actually, what do these heads mean to you, symbolize to you, and what brings you back to um, this motif? Well, it's it's really the self. It, it, it's really uh, all artists, you know, I, I believe in, in a lot of ways, I think uh, uh, artists that do self portraits of themselves, you know, I, I've done throughout my entire life, I have all kinds of self portraits, but they've really, um, it's a generic sort of a, a, a of an individual, just a person. Uh, uh, you know, it's 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 really looking at who 
humanity is. They represent humanity, really, as much as they do myself. And uh, it's just the human species. And here we are, and this is where we're at. And so uh, this, uh, that's what the, the profile really represents. Stripping away all everything other than just straight lines to try and create that, uh, that uh, sense of, of self that we're connected with not only outside, but inside of our, of our reality, you know, and. Um, mm -hmm. We have a question from the um, audience about your painting. Uh, they wanna know, did you paint the cross lines or did you scratch them in? The cross lines, uh, as you get into, again, it's glazing, but as I was glazing this particular canvas, what I did was I, I would uh, take water on the acrylic while it was still wet and, and, and uh, drip that across uh, and allow it to find its veins that would uh, bring out the under glazing, uh, 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 the underpaintings so that uh, it uh, washed, it ba basically washed away those, uh, 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 the, the, the wet paint so that it, it, it allowed the underpaint to also uh, come forward. Mm -hmm. I hope that explains it. <laughs> but there's all and, kinds. And, and was there a reason for the palette? When I look at these colors, I think maybe, um, you know, we're sort of, trained to, or, or, you know, made to think that blues and purples are sort of sad colors. And, and I wonder, is that the, the same experience for you in, in choosing these, the, this palette for this painting or, um, you know, because it's mainly the head and um, these graphic shapes, I'm wondering if you can walk us through sort of the, the mood that you're trying to convey or any, the thought that you had behind this painting. Well, I think it's a sense of serenity, uh, you know, okay. uh, to me. I, I, I find that the uh, lower spectrum uh, uh, of colors uh, uh, bring out to me a, uh, a sense of, of calm. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, staying away from the upper spectrum of colors and the warm, warm tones. So uh, there's a lot of deep purples uh, that, uh, that are in this uh, particular painting. And uh, so I, I worked primarily through that feeling of, of just inner, inner thought. And, and uh, so I, I like working in that lower spectrum of colors. Hmm. And I, I don't feel as though they're cool colors for myself. I mean, I, 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 I try to keep them within a certain range going from uh, through uh, uh, it may not show up on the on the reproduction here on the on here, but uh, it, it's behind me and it's a little bit more purple. <laughs> yeah, we see that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the, you know that's that's the um, that's the spiritual side, you know, mm -hmm. of of ourselves and uh, and uh, and how that guides my artwork throughout my life too. That as I as I dive within myself allowing the muses to guide my hand you know they 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 dive deep i dive very as deeply as i can into my own spiritual self and i try to project that back out onto the canvas and it teaches me uh, so much about where i am in that in that particular moment mm -hmm. great well thank you paul thank you for sharing your beautiful painting with us there you go. I'm going to move on to the next artist, Arthur Koch. Hi, thank Hi, you. Arthur. Great to uh, see everybody's work and, and hear their stories. Uh, art is very much a, a process and an experience for me, as much of a verb as it is a noun or a, a resulting object, <laughs> which almost becomes a responsibility. <laughs> um, but uh, when Philip first asked me to join this, it was January. And that's when a lot of us uh, make our New Year's resolutions. And uh, mine was to uh, wake up early enough to catch the sunrise and, and the, the morning colors. They're just so vivid and brilliant. And so I wouldn't uh, stay up so late drinking. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, this is uh, Lake Merritt in Oakland. And uh, I named it, uh, it's an excerpt from Amanda Gorman's poem that she recited at uh, Biden's inaugural. Uh, new, bon new Dawn Blooms As We Free It. And um, I was also inspired by uh, Reverend Warnock's acceptance speech uh, for the Georgia Senate. And if you don't mind, I'm going to quote that. Um, Please. If I can find it. Oh, I remember my dad used to wake me up every morning at dawn, but it was still dark. It's dark right now. But morning comes and scripture tells us that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Let us rise up, greet the challenges of the moment. Um, together, we can do the necessary work and win the future of our children. So that, that uh, is something I've been pondering quite a bit. Uh, there's a cycle of the day, the cycle of the month, the cycle of the year, the seasons that we go through. And the winter is, is a dark, cold, bleak time. And then now we're on the verge of spring and nature is renewing itself. Um, and we have, a new, we have a new government. <laughs> Can you scroll down to the second one? Yeah. So this is another excerpt from Amanda Gorman's poem. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. Um, and that reflects the feeling I have uh, really early in the morning. It's a very peaceful, contemplative time of day. And uh, that's the story. Uh, as far as my relationship to the Portla, I moved here. I bought a house in 1994 because it was a sunny neighborhood. I love McLaren Park. I, I could afford a backyard yard for my kid to play in. and. He went to uh, E.R. Taylor, Martin Luther King Jr. and was a track star at Burton High. Um, and then uh, Lisa and I opened a gallery up uh, five years ago and um, joined the Portland Neighborhood Association. And uh, I guess we've gotten to know our neighbors a lot better in the last 10 years than I did in the, the first 20, just because of uh, the involvement in the Neighborhood Association and then our, our studio gallery became kind of a cultural hub for the neighborhood and a, and a hub for uh, open studio. Um, and of course we like to garden and participate in uh, the garden tour. And that's my, that's my hope for the future is to reopen our gallery and, uh, and uh, take part into the next uh, Port La Garden Tour. Yeah, yeah. I I'm reading some of the comments in the chat, and it's uh it's nice to have this uh relationship between seeing this dawn and these birds flying, and then hearing the birds in the background in your That's <laughs> my... in your video. <laughs> it's adding a nice soundtrack. <laughs> ambiance. <laughs> so does that mean that you are more of a a, a morning uh, bird now rather than a night owl or? Or has this body of work changed your, your schedule? Well, I have shifted my sleeping patterns and I'm uh, drinking less and, and drinking earlier now. Um, <laughs> but um, I also try to get out there for the sunset. Um, I'm always kind of like, I always kind of drop everything an hour before the sunrise and the sunset to take a look at the sky and try to anticipate what the weather is going to do. And uh, so that's, a, I don't know, that's a reoccurring thing, especially with my drone. Um, and, uh, but I'm also a landscape painter. Primarily I'm a plain air landscape painter. That's what I've done mostly all my life. And, uh, you know, that's about scouting out locations too, just always observing the world while you're walking around and driving. And then um, with plain air painting, you have to uh, paint as fast as you can to capture the light and the moment and the feeling. Um, and it, it, when you're in the middle of it, it, it just doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. And then when you step back and look at it, you go, oh, well, that's not bad. And then, you know, somebody comes by and compliments you or makes a, a comment. And then, um, you know, that inspires you to, to 
bring it to a certain point. And oftentimes I finish them when I come home. Um, but now for the last six years, I've been doing large scale murals and that requires a lot of planning and um, uh, research. I've always liked that about illustration and murals. Uh, you know, landscape painting is just a, just an intuitive reaction to the place, whereas an illustration or a mural is more a, a more articulated message uh, for a larger audience. And uh, so it usually starts with a, a line drawing and then a color comp. And then I usually grid the wall out to transfer the drawing, paint it, and then seal it with uh, a clear coat, anti graffiti coat. And then uh, photography is, uh, Sometimes it's just uh, a discovery process uh, where, and several themes, reoccurring themes evolve like night shots in the rain and cityscapes and people. And, and uh, so the, I've kind of got these reoccurring themes that, that come up in my work. Um, also a lot of the neighborhood events that happen. Uh, um, and then for commercial photography, it's it's uh, you know less spontaneous. I use both natural and uh, studio lighting. And uh, when you're working with a client, um, you know it helps to have a plan and a concept. And uh, it helps to have a plan and a concept for anything that you do. Uh, but uh, but you have to be willing to abandon that mid process if uh, you know depending on how you're interacting with your your subject matter. Um, so sometimes plan A is, plan B is a lot more important than plan A, uh, but um, especially for commercial work, I usually, I've used to have a plan and I've, and, I've, and I've thought it out. Yeah, it's been great seeing um, your work uh, in, in murals in the neighborhood. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Arthur has a mural on the side of the grocery outlet on, uh, Silver and Gottingen, and he also has another mural on uh, Silliman at San Bruno. Uh, and speaking of murals, we also have um, Charles Dabo, who also has a mural uh, in the neighborhood as well on the side of San Bruno Market on San Bruno Avenue at Silver. So they're right next to each other. So if you want to come by and check out both of their works up there, you can. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Arthur. Thank for you. For sharing your wonderful photos with us. Uh, we're going to move on to the next artist, Lisa Magruder. Hey, Lisa, how are you doing? Hello. Hi. Thank you, Philip, for having me. It's an honor to be here among all these great artists. And, um, you know, Philip Hua has an art as a mural here, too. So, oh, on, yeah, that's right. The Imperial <laughs> Garden. <laughs> it's uh, very beautiful. Um, so I've been in the portal in nearly seven years and moving here for me was a new beginning. I moved from Folsom, California to start a new life here with, with Arthur. Um, and uh, I had never lived Aww. in a city before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always lived in suburban or, or rural, you know, I've, it's, it was a whole new experience for me, but um, uh so I, as Arthur said, we had a business here. We are now operating out of our home in some capacity and do have plans to reopen in a bigger and better space. So I have big hopes for, um, for that, you know, to become just, uh, you know, a great hub for the arts here in the Port of Love. Um, I'm also the chairman of the Arts and Beautification Committee and on the board of the Portland Neighborhood Association. Um, and so one thing that I keep hearing tonight, it's kind of nice to be the last artist because I get to hear what everybody else says first, but I, I do keep hearing a lot of themes about hope and freedom. And um, I love what Charles said when he said, at the end of the day, there's always hope. And, um, and then also uh, Enrico and Paul also talked about how art is a very meditative process. And, you know, that for me, painting is just a prayer. And um, these pieces uh, um, are, you know, both representing, well, I'll just start with the Raven Rising. Um, uh, I started a series of mandalas and um, it's, uh, uh, 
a mandala is a pretty uni universal theme, but it also started out to be um, kind of one of, of uh, a Buddhist type of imagery. The, um, the, the Buddhists were the first ones to use mandalas in their art. And uh, this image is of a raven just breaking free, starting new. And a lot of the themes in my art are, you know, light overcoming darkness, new beginnings, victory, freedom from the past. And a lot of the, my raven paintings um, have a cage in there somewhere where they're, they're freedom, they're breaking free from that cage. Um, so, so this uh, in Raven Rising too, it also has the image of a heart and it's uh, similar to the Catholic image of a sacred heart where it has the thorns around it and it also has um, a keyhole there. And back behind everything is that cross and the, the light of the cross is kind of coming through the keyhole and that to me sort of symbolizes that you know, there is a way to enter there and you don't really need to, to have the key. It's open, uh, open for all to be there. Um, and so the other piece, which is freedom here again is, uh, you know, a raven with kind of the symbol of the bird cage, but it all could, also could be the world, you know, in the background, just breaking free and he's kind of surfing on this um, crown of thorns there, which, uh, you know, the thorns, a lot of my work does have scriptural meaning and scriptural base. Um, although I do like to have the work to, to be appealing to all different beliefs and have it speak to people, whatever they are, you know, wherever they are. But um, uh, that whole symbol of light overcoming darkness is something that um, reoccurs in my art quite often. Um, pages here. Um, I I want to ask you a little bit about you and Arthur. You're both artists, and I would love to know. What is it like being in a relationship with another artist? You know, people want to know. Do you guys have, do you share ideas? Do you get into artistic conflicts? Like, I want to know. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's actually, it's actually pretty amazing. You know, my first marriage um, was with an engineer and we saw life and the world very differently. And he didn't really understand me and I guess I didn't understand him either, but, you know, it, it was tough. But, you know, for Arthur, we, the, the thing that's so good about it is we, we understand where we're coming from. And so we give each other the freedom to do what we need to do. And so we have space, you know, we give each other space. Um, we, uh, we have a lot of mercy and grace for each other <laughs> because of. I love that. You know, artists sometimes you know the artist men the artist personality is kind of tough to be around but <laughs> really well <laughs> do you have anything to add to that arthur oh i concur uh, both my parents were artists my father was a photographer and my mother was a painter and they were always uh you know debating whether photography was really art or not and you know and Who's 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 really an artist, and uh, and I think photography has come of its own right, and and is accepted as an art form. But uh, yeah, I'm the combination of a of an engineer and an artist. Um, and I guess that's partly how I got into uh, computer graphics. But it actually made me leery of uh, marrying another artist because I saw them struggle uh, to support the family, and um, even though they argued a lot, they stayed married until the very end, um, as did Lisa's parents. So I, th I think we both had good examples of, of love, uh, giving us a, a capability to love ourselves and love other people. Um, and uh, I always had, I always kind of thought that, that uh, us kids were sort of a burden to our parents. And I, when I left home at 16, I, I hoped that they would really pursue their art. And I, 
And when they, when they didn't so much, I asked them about that. And they said, well, art taught us how to see the world and to understand the world and to express ourselves and to find ourselves. And we don't necessarily feel like we need to prove ourselves through our art. Although, you know, they did continue to make art. Uh, I, I was a little disappointed that they didn't uh, spend more of their retirement focused on that and um, wondered why they always felt so overwhelmed and, and so busy when they didn't have really that many responsibilities. Now here I am and uh, I don't have a full-time job and both Lisa and I have found ways to fill up our lives and feel overwhelmed with things to do. So, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we both try to support each other and um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for being in a relationship with Lisa. Oh, that's so sweet. Might, it's heartwarming. I might <laughs> add too that I, we've known each other since junior high back in Columbia, Missouri. And, um, and, you know, there was like over 30 years. Well, we actually did go to art school together too, undergraduate school. And then there were 30 years where we, you know, went on with our lives and then met back up on Facebook. And that's the oh. Do you have any advice? Do you have any advice for someone trying to, uh, someone in a relationship with an artist or trying to snag an artist? <laughs> well, I think for me is um, just really um, always appreciating what they do. And our, our work is so much different and the way we go about art is very different, but, but just appreciating and, you know, really putting the effort into appreciating how they work instead of trying to see the differences, you know? Mm, that's great advice, great advice. Um, just one more question for you, Lisa, and then we'll open up to um, some audience questions if there are any. Um, I see there's two uh, ravens or, or crows or birds in both paintings. Is there a sp specific uh, meaning or does it have any uh, symbolism to you? Yeah, um, well, for one thing, this is kind of silly, but I feel like there's a raven in the neighborhood that follows me around. <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of ravens. Maybe there's a lot of them, but there's always one. I call him my buddy. Out on the porch, the the uh, a tree by our porch, and then you know I go different places, and there's my buddy again. And so I don't know what that means, but um, there's also a verse um, in Luke that that goes, consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable you are than birds. So it's just kind of a reminder to me of the love of God and how much um, I matter, you know, so mm. thanks for asking Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, I wanted to see if there are any uh, questions in the audience for the audience. Uh, for the artists, um, please type them in the chat now, and then we can uh, direct them. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> uh, I forgot to mention there's uh, one other another artist who was unable to make it to our reception. Her name is Meg Oldman. And I'm going to read you a quick excerpt about her work, um, about this specific, uh, these two pieces. It, she says, where is my place? Where am I going? What are my beliefs? And what do I feel are all questions that inform the work I present here? Mapping and creating pathways through shapes and patterns are a way I lead myself to explore these questions using my love of natural forms. So we thank you, Meg, uh, for exhibiting your works with us and we're sorry you couldn't make it. Um, any other questions for the artists? Are there any bold Art Curious members in tonight's meeting that would like to unmute themselves and take this opportunity to ask any of our artists who are present with us anything or you know even comments are welcome there are some we really do have some comments. we do have some questions um does loving the place you live and feeling belonging to it inspire your work 
um, let's, uh, let's direct that so that way uh, we don't have too much time because we want to spend, uh, we want to close out the show with Dueto Arte and I'll just direct that question. Uh, does living, uh, does loving the place you live and feeling belonging to it inspire your work? How about um, uh, Charles, Charles Debo? Yes, and in more recent times, I, I've been creating art that that pretty much reflects how how I'm impacted by the way we live in our neighborhood, and and I want to just focus on positive things. Uh, it's been a really great experience having to know so many good artists in our neighborhood. And that was very inspiring to me. And feeling like you are part of a brotherhood or sisterhood or just humanhood here to just have the same inclination, the same passion for art. And on top of that, the gardening itself bring us together. We share that commonality and uh, gardening is huge here in our neighborhood and i know each and everyone here is very gardening inclined and oriented so so that's what it means to live in this neighborhood it's it's uh has all, all these highlights you know doing the art doing gardening but more than anything the human spirit of all my neighbors of you artists and uh it's a source of in inspiration it, it it's like an endless source of inspiration because I see myself in, 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 into other humans. And whenever I hear, hear anyone talk or speak or share, what is the source of their inspiration? I can go back and dig deep into my own experience, my own uh, sources of inspiration. Great, yeah. Um, I wanna ask um, uh, Jenny, uh, we have uh, a question to all the artists, but I'd love to direct this to you. Are there any other artists or artworks that were made either about Port that or not that have influenced you? In tonight's show? Or in uh, just general? Just in general. Yeah, um, or, or even you know, tonight. Either. I really am loving being in a community of artists. That's so great. I've never had this experience before. I feel like my glasses are blue. But um, I loved hearing everyone's stories tonight. I've been a huge fan of Charles Dabo. I don't know, I, I usually talk to your wife, <laughs> but I've been a huge fan forever. And a, like everybody, it's just so awesome. I would love to paint with folks like as a group, maybe sometime. Um, yeah. Yeah. Love it. That would be that, did that, that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Good enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we don't have too much time. I want to hand it over to uh, Vanessa to make a quick announcement about um, the art auction. Hi, I'm trying to figure out how to spotlight myself, but apparently that's not a thing. So if you're just hearing my voice over the artist i think that's great i don't want to boot them all off yet but i just wanted to quickly pop in and before anybody signs off i mean please do stay for dueto arte their music is beautiful so inspiring like honestly amazing if you missed it at the beginning i highly encourage you to stay on but I want to let everybody know that Artspan is gearing up for their annual juried benefit art auction. It's gonna be in April and it's all online this year. So please um, come engage with us, come engage with our artists. We're gonna be running a few events all celebrating our local San Francisco Bay Area artists from April 17th through April 24th. And you'll be seeing a lot of messaging within the next week or so starting to go up on our social media and in your inboxes, inviting you to experience all of these events. It's a great opportunity to engage with over 150 artists all at once. So please come join us. A few of the artists who are with us tonight um, will have work in the auction as well. So we're really excited to present even more art to you very in the very near future so thank you and i'm gonna hand it back over to philip and all of our amazing artists from tonight's reception um and i just want to add actually before i do hand it off um it, i loved hearing each and every one of you speak about 
your work and share your personal stories. It's really just touching and it adds so much more to each and every one of these pieces. Like just, I mean, we always talk about how personal and engaging and impactful art is, but to really hear it come directly from the voice, like in the voice of the creators and hear them expand on all of these ideas and the sentiments and the experiences that went into this, these pieces is just, it's amazing. And it's really a, a very important part of why our team likes to do this and likes to host these receptions because it just adds so much more to each and every one of these compositions. So thank you all for joining us. I'd like to, hey, I'd like to make a comment, can I? My, my name's Mike Kensinger and I don't know quite how to do this on the chat room, but I especially want to thank everybody because it's been a marvelous way to spend a Thursday evening with art. And I just want to, I can't thank you all enough for sharing this with us and your insights have just been as, as, as has been said, have just been in, it just wonderful. And thank you all so much, Philip. Your, your questioning, your, your questions were so insightful and, and, and just wonderful. And the depth and the honesty that you all express through your art is why art is and what art is. And thank you all just very much for, for and thank you, Arts Man, for just doing this for us. And, and what a wonderful neighborhood we have. Thank you, Michael. Have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. No better way to close out the show than with that comment. We really appreciate it. But uh, we're going to have one last set from Dueto Arte. Please stick around and hang out and listen to their really beautiful music. Uh, and with that, we will let you take it away, Dueto Arte. All right, thank you, thank you. Wow, what an amazing show, and it's really nice to hear the stories behind it. Uh, so we have three more songs, or so, or two, or, or three. Yeah. And I need a cue from you guys, but it's been a pleasure for us uh, having in the, ha, ha, having been in this show, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be seeing you in person soon. Uh, in the real time soon and be careful out there stay safe this is called bonita the beautiful one <laughs> aquellos juguetes que yo tuve en los días infantiles de ayer bonita como el beso robado como el llanto llorado por un hondo placer la sinceridad de tu espejo fiel puso vanidad en ti sabes mi ansiedad que haces un placer de las penas que tu orgullo brotan para mí bonita pedazos tu espejo para ver si así dejo de sufrir tu altivez la sinceridad de tu espejo fiel puso vanidad en ti sabes mi ansiedad es un placer de las penas que tu orgullo forjan para ti bonita haz pedazos tu espejo para ver si así dejo de sufrir tu altivez bonita
Thank you guys. So Woo! We are Dua Tuarte. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And um, what's next? Todo me gusta de ti. Todo me gusta de ti. I like everything about you and you. <laughs> <laughs> and including yourself. Some, something like that. <laughs> Cantando quiero decirte lo que me gusta de ti, las cosas que me enamoran y te hacen dueño de mí. de tu mirar me gusta todo lo tuyo todo me gusta de ti y ya no cabe más adoración en mí me basta lo que tengo para amarte, dulce amor, ven a mí, ven a mí, por Dios. Me gusta todo lo tuyo, todo me gusta de ti, y ya no cabe más adoración en mí me basta lo que tengo para amarte dulce amor ven a mí ven a mí por How you guys doing? Do you want one more time? One more song? Do we have more. time? Yeah, let's do one more and then. Okay, well, well it it, this has been a pleasure. Thank you for including us on this uh, amazing um, virtual event, and uh, we really hope to see you in person and hug you and and see the artwork um, face to face soon enough. Uh, stay uh, safe out there, and this is called. El cisne. El cisne. El cisne. Allá en la noche callada, para que se oiga mejor. Amame mucho, que se amo yo. Amame mucho. Que se amo yo, no creas que porque canto tengo el corazón alegre. Amame mucho, que se amo yo, amame mucho, que se amo yo. Yo soy como el pobre cisne, ay sí, ay no. Yo soy como el pobre cisne que cuando canta se muere. Amame mucho, que se amo yo. Amame mucho, que se amo yo. Morena de ojazos negros, párpados vaciladores. Amame mucho, que se amo yo. Amame mucho. Que se amo yo, yo quiero formar contigo el nido de mis amores. Amame mucho, que se amo yo, amame mucho, que se amo yo. Yo soy como el pobre cisne, 
Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for attending. Thanks. Thank you for that. Thank you all for Thank you. Bye. Great event. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, all the artists. Thank you. Thank you. Music. Oh, my God. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> oh, beautiful. beautiful. Nice music. Thank, Thank you, you guys. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you to the artists. All of you still here. It's really Cheers. Thank you guys for everything. <laughs> cheers, guys. Ching. Cheers, cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Ching, oh. ching. Look, it's just like a real reception. Nobody's leaving. <laughs> 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 now we can all talk smack <laughs> just like an art reception no. <laughs> like any true art set off any true right. art we, nobody like, ever leaves people just hang out get really drunk and then and the artists? <laughs> where's the drugs <laughs> where's the after party <laughs> where's the after party almost always somewhere philip great job really all of you great job you go to yeah, Arte, you, amazing, really. Um, Arthur, way to wear the Portola logo gear. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. anyone's yeah. Right? Everybody He's is. Representing. Way to train the birds to sing exactly when you need them to and cue the birds. <laughs> that was great. So it was it was amazing. Um, some of you know that I'm I'm kind of in charge of this crazy crew in many ways. And it is it is exactly events like this that refill my well and remind me why I do this work. So thank you so much. The artist, Aww. the honesty, the tenderness, the boldness. Philip, what way to bring together such a beautiful, beautiful collection of humans. Um, amazing. And Duarte Arte, you guys, I, I really almost cried. There was a little bit I was on, off video because I was just like feeling emotional because we're about to enter our auction time. And if you know anything about nonprofits, we have to raise money to keep doing the great work we do to support all of you. And we didn't have one last year and it was a brutal year. And now we're going to do, do it this year. And so thank you all for the work you do and reminding us all why we do the work. So amazing. Cheers yeah. to everybody. Cheers. 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 <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. We're going to survive. Right. We're going to survive. I'm pretty sure. We're going to make it. Great. Yeah. Oh. Amazing work. As always. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Lisa, it looks like you are in a you are in a room that it is like not with the birds. We didn't hear the birds when you were talking. I know I'm in the other room. I didn't want to get that you know like that reverb that goes back and forth when you're doing <laughs> you, mean, that, you mean you mean that reverb? I mean the rebird. The rebird, yeah. <laughs> rebird. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh Joanne. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I obviously need another drink. It's, you know, I need, to, I, I need to start drinking earlier, like Arthur, or no, wait, later. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Seriously, Great. you know, Duarte Arte, you guys are amazing. Way to go, Philip. Way to know your neighborhood. Way to know these amazing people down there in the Portola Garden District. Yeah. I love the neighborhood. Seriously. Ooh, I'm, go Portola. Yeah, seriously. It's so good. Thank you guys so much, True.